Hey everybody, so last class in class actually, I had my first lecture in a long time in, in person and that was fun, but um, we're back to video lectures and last class we talked about the law of conservation of momentum and I didn't really give you all that much information about it. We did that kind of cool demonstration, we did that kind of cool lab, and we talked a lot about momentum and impulse, and hopefully got a lot of those confusions cleared up. So now that we can really dive into this idea that momentum is always conserved. Conserved, again, just means saved, like kept, safe. So it, it's kept forever. Once there is momentum, that momentum is never just going to go away. It's only going to be transferred, just like energy was transferred in the law of conservation of energy. And we can represent this idea of the law of conservation of momentum with this fairly simple looking equation where this is what's called a sigma. And it's a symbol that we use in mathematics to mean the sum of, or, or if you add all the parts together, this is what you get. Um, this is our initial momentum. Initial. Momentum, so this is our, the sum of all of the parts beforehand. So if we have a hundred objects and they all are moving in different directions and we add all of those momentums together, that means that all of their, that, that one vector, now that we've added all of those vectors together, that one vector is our initial momentum. Um, and we can even split them into all of their parts. It's fine, it will look like um, the momentum of object one plus the momentum of object two before the collision. Um, so that's what this little uh, indication is. That's what this little I mean. And this equal sign is the collision itself. This is where all of the momentum is transferred from one thing to another. This is where all the impulse lies. Um, and then this is just true for the other side. This is some of and this little f here means final. So breaking that down into all of its pieces and parts hopefully clears up exactly how we're going to use this. And I want you to really think about what these parts mean as we actually look at some collisions. I have some cars here. Um, it looks like you guys can see them okay. Maybe I'll move you guys up. Yeah, that probably wasn't dizzying. Um, there we go. Now you guys can hopefully see those cars a bit better. And I got a little bit of board to the right. Come on. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So, we're going to keep this in mind as we watch these collisions occur. And there are a couple of different kinds of collisions. There are elastic collisions. Where two things hit each other on. Okay, hold on. You guys can see that. Oh, I don't think you can. Oh, there we go. Elastic collisions. And in elastic collisions, the objects that are colliding, the two objects that we're going to be talking about, bounce off of one another. Right? So they hit, they collide, there's a transfer of momentum, there's some change in momentum. But those objects don't stick together, they bounce off of each other. Think of like billiards balls. Or if I'm playing pool, all of those collisions are going to be uh, elastic. They're going to bounce off of one another. Inelastic are just the opposite. Inelastic collisions are when you've got two objects, they're moving toward each other. When they hit, they actually stick together meaning that they're no longer two different objects, but instead they're one united object. So this is when they don't bounce or stick together. So here we've got two objects beforehand, two objects afterwards. Here we've got two objects beforehand, one object afterwards. And our last one is actually an explosion, which isn't really a collision. Uh, in the classic sense, but it's still a transfer of momentum, so I like lumping it in with these other two elastic and inelastic collisions. Explosions are when things break apart. Meaning that we have one object beforehand and two or more objects afterwards. So we've got kind of a pattern going. Here we've got two objects that bounce into each other and two objects afterwards. 
Here we've got two objects beforehand, they bounce into each other, and then we only have one object because they stick. The last one is when one object breaks into multiple pieces, and we can talk about how the law of conservation of momentum affects that. So let's watch this first collision, and it's going to be an example of an elastic collision. Here I've got one cart, um, it's just a regular Pasco cart. Same with this one, just a regular Pasco cart like you guys have seen before. Um, each one we'll say has a mass of one. I'm going to do all of my math. Let's do it up here. So um, we're going to have two objects beforehand. Object one has its own momentum plus object two has its own momentum. So this is really the sum of, oh, you guys can't see that. This is really just the sum of our initial parts. This is object one initially. This is object two initially. Then they are going to hit and we're going to have two objects afterwards. This is object one, and this is object two, final. I hope that this idea makes sense. We have one object here, it will have its own momentum. Right now it has zero momentum because it's not moving. This also has zero momentum, but I'm going to give this object some momentum before it crashes into that object. And we'll talk about the consequences in just a second. Ah, so exciting. So exciting. Yeah, that was a serious collision that we had there. Um, let's say that this had a mass of about 0.5. We can say that this momentum is dictated by the mass of object 1 uh, times the velocity of object 1 initially. right? And, and mass times velocity is just momentum. I'm just kind of breaking this momentum into its pieces and parts, and it's made up of mass times velocity, plus the mass of object 2, plus times the velocity of object 2. In this case, the velocity was 0, so we're just going to write 0 there, and that's nice and easy. And we're going to break out the, the second half. I'm going to have to actually probably turn this. There we go. Um, up for this as well. So this is P1. This is P2 equals whatever the velocity, or sorry, whatever the mass, and that didn't change, so this is still just mass 1, times velocity 1 final, turned out to be about 1. I don't know if you guys noticed, but that car was still moving only slightly afterwards. So mass 1 times velocity 1 plus mass 2 times velocity 2. And this wasn't zero, not after the collision. After the collision, that second object was actually moving. So we have some velocity there. And we're going to try to figure that out. How fast did that go? Um, we'll say that uh, the, uh, all of these cars weigh about half of a kilogram. So this is 0.5 times, we're going to say that I gave it a velocity of about 10 meters per second, which is much faster than I actually gave it. This is kilograms plus zero, because the velocity of that first object, it wasn't moving, it's zero, its momentum was zero. Here, so this leads us to, we have five total momentum beforehand. That means we're going to have five total momentum afterwards. That uh, car was moving very slightly afterwards. Let's say that it had a velocity of about two meters per second afterwards. Its mass hasn't changed, so that's still 0.5. 0.5 of 2 is 1. Oh, I should move this up just a little bit. 0.5 kilograms times 2 meters per second plus whatever this is. Um, and we don't know. We know the mass is 0.5, but we don't know what the velocity is. That's what we're going to try to figure out right now. Um, 0.5, that's 1 over here plus something over here, and what could it be? Well, we don't know yet, so we're just going to leave it at 0 0.5, velocity squared, um, 1 plus 0.5 times velocity squared. We don't know, we can't, we got to get rid of this 1, so we're going to subtract it from both sides. That leaves us with 4 over here. 4 equals 0.5 times v squared. Divide both sides by 0.5, v squared turns out to be 8. I know that that was a really complicated equation, but really all I did was I found the momentum of object 1 in the beginning using its mass and velocity, 
I found the momentum of object two using its mass and velocity. I found the momentum of object three, mass and velocity. And I found the momentum of object four, mass and velocity. I just wanted to go through one full equation with you guys before we get into class. Where it's not important that you know all of these steps. It's important that you start to think about what these steps are really showing us. Um, the important thing, we're, we're going to have lots and lots of classes to practice this math. Just try to think about the flow of momentum. Here I see momentum. Here it's still momentum. After we start plugging things in, it's just math. And math we can all do. I know I've seen you all do it. So math I know we can do. Um, I'm going to spend just a couple more minutes of your time, and I want to talk about so if this is an example of an elastic collision, and we can represent that by showing P1 beforehand plus P2 after beforehand equals P1 before afterwards, P2 afterwards. Right? We have two before, two afterwards. In an inelastic collision, and I'll show you guys an example of an inelastic collision that I'm still on screen here. Okay. So the momentum of this guy is zero beforehand. The momentum of this guy, we're going to say, is 10 again, uh, just to make it easier, or 5 again, just to make it easier on us. When I, when I roll this cart toward the other cart, they hit and they stick together. I don't know if you guys can see that, but they're sticking together. Um, so this is an example of an elastic. This is going to be an example of a, the equation for an inelastic. And they're all spawning from... They're all spawning from this idea. They're all spawning from this sum of beforehand equals sum of afterwards. In this case, the sum of beforehand was our momentum of object one plus the momentum of object two is equal to the momentum of object one and two because now they're only one thing. Right? We could also represent this as uh, mass one plus mass two times their combined velocity. Because their velocity is the same. They have to be the same because they're stuck together. If they weren't the same, they wouldn't be stuck together for very long. So this velocity represents the velocity of this whole thing. This P1 2. Hope that that makes a little bit of sense for you guys. And lastly, we're going to talk about an explosion. An explosion is when we have one object beforehand and potentially many objects afterwards. All I'm doing each one of these times is manipulating this idea that all of the momentum we have beforehand is the same as all of the momentum we have afterwards. Um, I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to write out all of these things and what they mean, and then I'm going to start the video up and explain it just one more time. Okay, so like I said, I was going to write it out one more time. Um, here is the type of collision or the type of transfer or change in momentum. The first one, elastic. When two objects collide and we have two objects afterwards, nothing really changes except that there is a transfer of momentum. And then I wrote over here how we can express this mathematically. We can express it mathematically by saying the sum of both of those objects' momentum beforehand has to equal the sum of both of those objects' momentum afterwards. Next, I just wrote out what that means in terms of this particular collision. In this collision, we've got two objects beforehand, two objects afterwards, an elastic collision. We have the momentum of object one before. We've got the momentum of object two before. Then we have the momentum of object one after and the momentum of object two after. Because they're still separate objects, we have to calculate their momentum separately. An inelastic collision is when we have two objects beforehand, they collide, they stick together, then they move on as one object. Here I show that as the momentum of object one, because it's still its own object, the momentum of object two, because it's still its own object, and then afterwards we have this united object that is both the mass of, of, object, of both objects beforehand, plus the velocity of this new, whatever the amalgamation of these two objects is. And lastly, we have the explosion, which is one object beforehand turns into multiple objects afterwards. And again, we just have to make sure that if it's one object, we're going to try to calculate the momentum of each object 
that we can think about. The more we can think about, the more objects we can take into account and calculate the momentum, the more easily we can do this. Good luck.